Hi, I'm Jeff Lowe, Chief Executive Officer of Asian Sky Group and Asian Sky Media, here to give you a sneak preview of our upcoming China GA report for 2020. The Chinese version of the report will be released on October 14th, and the English version will come out a week later. But I'm here to give you the details of the report in advance, so hopefully you'll tune in a week from now and pick up your copy or download your copy from our website as well. Before we get into the report itself, I'd like to thank our sponsor, the Bermuda Aircraft Registry, and also thank our special contributors, Pratt & Whitney of Canada, Bell Helicopters, Textron Aviation, and ASBA. If you're tuning in for the first time and are not aware or familiar with Asian Sky Media, we produce a number of B2B and B2C publications through the year, 12 different reports. Uh, those reports touch on everything from fleet size to infrastructure to charter training, uh, you name it, all the issues that the industry has to address every year. Uh, we do a pretty good job at it, uh, having been recognized now four years in a row by ASBA as the best media outlet. We're also the official media partner of a number of air shows and conferences throughout the Asia Pacific region. So as I said, for more information, please go to our website, www.asianskymedia.com. On to the report itself, uh, section, the first section is on the China general aviation market and the state of that market, which is not great at the moment. Um, I'd like to say that uh, 2020 is, is the precursor to something that's even worse, but the fact is the market has been in decline now since 2018. 2018, we peaked as far as the number of operators, but that growth has tailed off through 2019 and 2020. So it's not necessarily just a COVID-19 phenomenon. So in 2018, you saw 370 operators, but growth of 37% down to where we, here we are in August of 2020 with only 443 offers, operators, but growth of just 4%. So big decline in the growth of operators and that's also then led to the fleet size not growing at a very high rate anymore as well. But again, the growth rate in the fleet has been declining for several years now. It peaked back in 2017 at 20%, but through 2020 so far, we're only seeing 6%. So as of today, the fleet stands at just under 3,000 GA aircraft at 2,930. But the surprising side of all that, despite there being less operators, and if you will, not as many airplanes, or at least as far as the growth rates, actually the number of hours that are being flown have been increasing significantly at a good rate over the last three or four years. So in 2017, 10%, 2018, 12%, 2019, 14%. Yes, we've seen a decline this year of minus 3%, but really that is totally due to COVID-19. So there had been good growth through uh, the number of hours over the years, even though the number of operators and the fleet size have not matched that growth. Where have those hours, if you will, what missions have they been doing? Uh, the majority of the hours being flown by GA fleet in China is for training, 55%, then followed by industrial, agriculture, consumer, transportation, and emergency. But those bottom three, emergency, transportation, consumer, that's where we also see the best growth opportunities as well. So keep an eye on those sectors. Getting into more specifics of what COVID-19 has meant and the impact it's had on the GA market. Here's, an, uh, here's a graph that gives you the GA flight hours. So if you take 2019, which is the line in black, you can see through the course of the year, there's a dip in typically the April, sorry, the February, March time period, and that coincides with Chinese New Year. But this year, you can see that that, that decline was almost down to zero, and that is certainly the impact of COVID-19. But having said that, the market recovered quite quickly. Two months later, when you look at April, May, we're almost matching 2019. And then actually, when you look at where we are today, we're actually doing more hours than was done in 2019. So as the, crash, or sorry, as the graph shows, there was a crash, there was a recovery, and now we have rebounded and we're back to decent GA flight hours per month. But as we all know, there's an economic impact side to COVID-19 as well. And certainly we're seeing the GA operators being decimated by COVID-19. Already eight months through the year, 
We've seen 27 operators go out of business, and that's more than we saw in all of 2019. And 2019 was a bad year too. If you take 2019 and 2020 to date, 53 operators went out of business. That total, it, you have to go back another seven years before you match that number. So the state of the industry is not great, and certainly COVID-19 when it comes to the economic impact and the feasibility of operators, uh, it has had a dramatic impact on that for sure. Delving back into the fleet then and looking at what makes up that fleet, as we said, 2,930 airplanes, half of those are turboprop piston airplanes, then followed by helicopters and then business jets. So the bulk of the fleet is turboprops and pistons aircraft. When you look at that turboprop piston fleet, it's dominated by Textron with 30% market share, followed by Diamond and then Avic, who's the big domestic China manufacturer. And most of that fleet is all single engine piston aircraft of one type or another. Helicopters dominated by Robinson, then by Airbus, Bell, Leonardo Sikorsky, and again, most of them are in the single engine category, followed by pistons. I mean, between those two, you've got almost 75% of the market. Business jets, the smallest fleet, 326 airplanes. And as everyone knows, uh, the nature of that fleet is certainly long range and large cabin, and not too surprising, then dominated by Gulfstream and by Bombardier. Between those two, you're almost 60% market share between the two of them, and they dominate the market. Looking at the engine side of things, as we've seen before, most of the aircraft are single pistons, so not too surprisingly, that's the engine type we're seeing, the most piston engines, then followed by turboshafts, turbofan, and turboprop. On the piston side, as far as the dominant OEM, you're seeing Lycoming and Continental. On the turboshaft side, Safran and Pratt & Whitney of Canada. Turbofan, Rolls-Royce and Pratt & Whitney of Canada again, and GE. And then on the turboprop side, Pratt & Whitney of Canada total of 3,751 engines in the market at the moment. In this edition of China GA Report, we've also have a, a special focus on the China GA manufacturers, domestic manufacturers in country. Uh, typically in China, you have, if you will, homegrown self-developed products within China, but also you have a lot of foreign aircraft that have been introduced into the market they're produced within China, but essentially they're, they're uh, foreign aircraft that are being produced on behalf of a, of a foreign manufacturer in China. So the market at the moment is pretty much split sort of 60-40, 60% being self-developed, 40% being foreign induced, and the majority of those are fixed wing aircraft, almost 80% of that market. Number of GA manufacturers in China that have production certificates, so the market, the GA market in China, you've got 33 different manufacturers producing aircraft at the moment in the China market. And most of those manufacturers are on the east coast of China, where is most of the development, and most of those are around the Beijing area as well. Last but not least, take a look at infrastructure. Infrastructure is, of course, key to the development of GA in any country. And certainly China is no exception. If you don't have the airports, if you don't have the FBOs and the MROs, the fleet cannot grow and cannot function. On the airport side, the story remains to be a fairly good one. We've seen 21% growth 2019 and 2020 as far as the number of airports have, that are being added. Yes, it's not going to meet the targets set by the last five-year plan from the central government, but still very impressive growth when it comes to the airports, 21%. And of those airports, different categories, of course, we have category A and B, and then also uncertified airfields, category B GA airports being ones that can only be operated privately, and category A airports, ones that can be operated publicly and can be used for commercial transport as well. So most of the development at the moment, 40% of the airports are private airports that cannot be used for commercial passenger transportation. But those typically are those grassroots GA airports that are being used by private owners and their aircraft. Where the market really lags uh, is in the, in the area of FBOs. When you think of the size of the country of China, 
uh, and the number of airports that it does have to only have 12 FBOs and with a 13th coming soon, uh, really it is not serving the market at all. So a huge, huge deficit, if you will, when it comes to the number of FBOs. On the MRO side, the industry is being fairly well supported. Most of the OEMs have got, if you will, OEM owned facilities in country. Uh, and there's a good number of authorized facilities as well with a total number of 30. So if you will, 37 different MRO facilities in total, which is pretty good serving the market at the moment. But on the FBO side, as we said, really, really, really lacking. Last but not least, as I said, looking at training, uh, always a big issue, uh, particularly in China. Uh, the issue being that there are just not as many schools being, if you will, built and put online or introduced as should be. So you can see here that the numbers have tailed off from year to year as far as the number of schools that have been produced. And consequently, what that means is for the schools that they do have, uh, the amount of vacancies being available is diminishing. So if you will, the number of schools are not enough and the ones that we do have aren't able to take the students that we would like to. So that is really leading to a problem that we're gonna have down the road, if you will. And part of that is, to give you some idea, is that we have growth, if you will, as far as the number of pilots uh, that are being needed and licenses being required of 10% every year. So if the schools can't keep up with the demand, you know there's gonna be a shortage in the industry eventually. And so that's something that's coming up that has to be addressed as well. As you see here, the growth in the pilot licenses has been good and very steady over the last four years. But again, the airport, sorry, but again, the training schools haven't been able to keep up. And so that's gonna result into a problem further down the road. Well, that's our sneak preview of the English edition of the China GA report. As I said, the Chinese version will come out first on October 14th but please look for the English copy that will come out a week later. So I hope you enjoyed my sneak peek, and we'll look forward to seeing you again and for you to tune in to www.asianskymedia.com for all the latest updates we have. Thanks.